Je donne maintenant la parole à Madame Anne Fordham, directrice exécutive de, de, du Consortium international des politiques en matière de drogue, qui va parler de a Civil Society Perspective on the Impact of the World Drug Problem in the Enjoyment of Civil and Political Rights, including the right to life. Anne, vous avez la parole. Thank you, Madam Dreyfus, and thank you for the invitation to address the Human Rights Council today. It's a privilege and an honor to speak here. I'm the Executive Director of the International Drug Policy Consortium, a broad global network of 140 NGOs and networks from over 60 countries that come together to advocate for drug policies strongly grounded in the principles of human rights. This discussion is critical and timely in light of the upcoming UN General Assembly Special Session on Drugs scheduled to take place next April. The UNGAS on Drugs is a rare and important opportunity for Member States to have an open and honest debate regarding the challenges and shortcomings of the global response to drug control. It is an opportunity for States to acknowledge and address the widespread and devastating consequences of punitive laws and policies and law enforcement practices on the enjoyment of human rights for millions of people around the globe. It is today indeed a historic moment and very encouraging to see drugs issues being given prominence here at the Human Rights Council. Geneva and Vienna have operated in silos for too long. We have seen great improvement in the human rights rhetoric within the Vienna-based drug control bodies but there has been little real commitment towards genuine, tangible operational recommendations. And meanwhile, human rights violations in the name of drug control continue unchecked, demonstrating a very um, serious systemic failure at the international level. So the report from the OHCHR is thus greatly welcomed. It starkly highlights the urgent need to address the negative impact of human rights on, of the current drug control policy regime. I have been asked to focus my short time on civil and political rights, in particular the right to health, and I will highlight three critical issues, violations of the right to life, criminalization of drug use and people who use drugs, and disproportionate punishment. However, the punitive and damaging na nature of the international drug control regime, underpinned by a treaty framework that contains some outdated elements, are key issues for many civil society organizations. And as the only civil society speaker on this panel, I'm only able to address a fraction of these concerns. So I very much hope that our moderator will find a way to ensure that we hear from as many of my civil society colleagues speaking from the floor as possible. I'll begin with the violation of the right to life. It is deeply concerning that the right to life is frequently compromised by aggressive supply reduction activities that lead to death sentences for drugs offenders. Under international law, the death penalty may only be applied for the most serious crimes. The UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial, Summary or Arbitrary Executions and the Human Rights Committee have made it clear that drug offences do not fall into this category. On extrajudicial ki killings, human rights experts, member states and civil society have also raised serious concerns about extrajudicial summary or arbitrary executions carried out in the name of drug control efforts. It has been well documented that police and military forces engage in extrajudicial killings, enforce disappearances, torture, ill treatment and arbitrary detention in the name of the war on drugs. My second point is around criminalization and associated violations of human rights. The negative impact of the criminalization of drug use and therefore of people who use drugs continues to be an area of great concern, as highlighted by the Deputy High Commissioner. Individuals have a right to access life-saving health services without fear of punishment and discrimination. And UN agencies such as UNDP, UNAIDS, UNODC and the WHO have all recognized the negative impact of criminalization on the prevalence of HIV and hepatitis C amongst people who inject drugs. But there are further collateral consequences as the criminalization of people who use drugs serves to justify additional harsh measures towards them. A stark example of this is the widespread use of compulsory drug detention centers for the supposed treatment and rehabilitation of people who use drugs.
In 2012, 12 UN agencies called on states to close these centers immediately and to provide voluntary human rights-based health and social services in the community. Yet today, thousands of people who use drugs are still retained in these centers. Despite the overly punitive thrust of the drug control treaties, they do not require states to criminalize drug use or possession for personal use. And many governments have thus decriminalized drug use and possession of personal use to protect the health and other human rights of people who use drugs. My final point is on disproportionate punishment. The burden of highly disproportionate sentences for drugs offences has largely been borne by vulnerable groups involved in the drug trade at a low level, often driven by basic subsistence needs. These include women involved in minor trafficking offences, subsistence farmers involved in illicit cultivation, and many others who are punished for the simple possession of drugs. With respect to subsistence farmers, in the absence of alternative livelihoods, forced eradication efforts dep deprive them of their only available means to live a life in dignity by driving them deeper into poverty. These are only a fraction of the widespread violations of human rights that have been documented in the context of drug control policies. And the empirical evidence that underlines this point is extensive and damaging. It is encouraging that this prominent panel discussion is taking place and as civil society we urge the Human Rights Council to view this as the start of a process to ensure human rights based drug control. The expertise to address the complex interplay between drug policy and human rights is here in Geneva. So on behalf of the IDPC I have three recommendations to suggest to ensure that this issue can be given the due prominence it deserves here at the Council. The first is that we call on the Council to consider creating a special procedure on drug policy and human rights. We also ask that the Council mandate the existing special procedures to produce a comprehensive joint report on the impacts of drug policies on their mandates. And finally, we ask the Council to consider designating an annual thematic day of discussion on the impact of the world drug problem on the enjoyment of human rights. Last year, former High Commissioner Nave Pillai urged all states to reconsider, from a human rights perspective, the decades-old approach to drug control based on repression. Let's use today's opportunity to address that call. I look forward to a fruitful and productive discussion. Thank you. Merci,